Hello. How is everyone today? Doing great, uh, Brian. How about yourself? Oh, it's a busy Wednesday, but I am doing well. Great. All right. So uh, today is um, April 15th, 2020. And uh, let me actually bring up the agenda here real quick. Uh, before we get started, just keep in mind that this uh, meeting is recorded and will be available for the whole world to see. So don't say anything you wouldn't want the whole world to see. All right. Yes. So uh, today our agenda is uh, actually not very long. Um, there, uh, there are some items that are going on in the background right now, um, namely around um, SIG app delivery versus uh, the working group serverless. And we are currently working those issues out. Uh, but first up is um, a presentation here from, oh, I'm not gonna, all right, is it to your mayor? Yeah, yeah, you got it. All right. So um, I'll let you uh, take over right now. And um, thank you. So let me stop sharing. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Great. All right. Let me just pull up presentation. All right, so first of all, thank you guys for having us today. Thanks for allowing us to present. Um, this is a presentation for Sandbox proposal for the serverless workload specification. Uh, my name is Tihomir Shurdilovich. I, I am a developer at Red Hat. been there for about 11 years, and uh, <laughs> I'm working on business automation there. Uh, as far as CNCF goes, I've been contributing to the serverless workflow spec for about close to a year now. And I've also done a couple of contributions to the cloud event specification, just so you guys know who I am. Um, so the agenda here for today's talk is I'm just going to give an introduction to what is serverless workflow specification, then the motivations behind it. I'm going to look at a couple of key features and uh, use cases. So everybody understands what this project is about. Uh, then we'll go into kind of like the project information and stuff like that. And then if there is time, uh, of course, we'll do a quick demo and, and of course, any questions that you guys might have. So if we can summarize the serverless workload specification in one sentence, uh, we want to focus on vent being a vendor neutral specification for defining workflow models. These workflow models are responsible for orchestrating microservices. And when we talk about orchestrating, we talk about coordination and management of both services, um, loosely distributed services, microservices, and also events that can trigger, uh, for example, these services. Um, this slide kind of, I want to get right into it, what we are and what we are not. Uh, in the top left corner in the box, you see what the serverless workflow specification provides um, or is striving to provide. At the core of the specification is the JSON schema. And this is something we have been working on and also have released version 0.1 recently of the schema uh, alongside, of course, the specification document and everything, examples, use case documents and everything else. Uh, this JSON schema clearly describes the workflow model that uh, you can use to describe serverless workflows. Out of this JSON schema, then we strive to provide, hopefully in the near future, um, a lot of different things like SPIs, APIs, uh, TCKs for conformance purposes in many different languages. We <laughs> at Red Hat uh, will contribute uh, an SPI, a Java SPI, 
but however, we have to wait until we have a proper GitHub structure in place for that. Uh, so that is kind of like the core of what the specification does. Uh, the com in the community, there has to be implementers. So these are basically runtime implementations. They can use the provided SPI say, and APIs to create runtime implementations for the ser serverless workloads. They have to use that or create their own and they have to, in order to conform to the specification, uh, they have to conform to, a, to given tests in the TCK. And what we're actually trying to achieve, uh, the main goal is to be able to write JSON or YAML based, which specification uh, um, has both um, formats available, uh, workflows which can execute on many different runtimes and by that be able to be deployed on many different cloud providers. So that's kind of like the core idea behind the specification and what we're striving to do. Now, as far as the motivation go, why are we even attempting this or why is this project interesting or important? If you look in this slide, there's a whole bunch of serverless workflow implementations already in place. And these are just some of them and it seems new ones are popping up every month, it seems. Um, they go, of course, you guys heard about AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, and there's a bunch of other ones um, that, that are available. And a lot of, if not all of the cloud providers have realized the workflows are an integral part of their uh, serverless offering in order to, to complement um, the, the, the development and deployment of serverless applications. Now, well, again, but that doesn't mean we need the specification. So why do we actually need a specification? The current user situation for serverless workflows as we've seen with all those implementations are once you choose a um, cloud provider, that offers, for example, a serverless workflow implementation, you run into big vendor locks on both the workflow model level. So you're basically stuck with the proprietary, <coughs> in most cases, definition of a workflow definition. And it's also you're stuck with workflow notation, which is the visual representation of the workflow itself. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's very hard currently, if not impossible, to take your workflow definitions and move them from one cloud provider to the next. And this creates the situation where we need a portable and vendor neutral specification. Now, as far as the serverless workflow specification really focus on the workflow model, we're not currently looking at notation. We have attempted that it, uh, a little bit here and there, but we, we're waiting to grow and have, get a community in place before we attempt to actually deal with the notation part of it. But we are focusing definitely on the workflow model. So this is why the motivation behind a specification, and this is why uh, we believe that it is very important currently, given the situation of what's going out there with serverless workflows and cloud providers, that a specification is, is much needed. So let's take a look at some of the key features of, of the serverless workflow specification. They all fall into kind of two buckets. Uh, and everything that we're doing or adding to the specification, we are looking into these two buckets and see how we improve based on those. The first one, of course, is something the workflows are doing and have been around for a very long time. And what they're very good at is the clear separation of concerns. We would like workflows are really used to allow uh, developers to build their business logic, their functions, their services, to focus on business logic and workflows. What they do, they offload a lot of cross-cutting concerns such as parallel execution. So <clears throat> data management, things like that. All the orchestration logic is, this is kind of like where workflows are responsible for. At the same time, we have to look at uh, workflows ex running in the serverless environment and especially the cost. Uh, the cost of running in serverless environments it might be quite different than what in the typical uh, or, 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 or other types of environments. Workflows a lot of times are either charged based on some sort of transition. So if your workflow goes from one state to the next, you get charged a certain amount of money. 
or in some cases you're charged again for execution time of the workflow. So in both cases, all the uh, control flow logic and the, and the things that we're adding to our specification, we're looking at uh, how we can structure those and build those to lower the overall execution cost um, of, of the services uh, running. Now, the core of the serverless workflow is the model definition. Uh, like I said, we bo support both JSON and YAML for, uh, formats, so we're kind of machine readable, understandable, and embeddable. Um, this is kind of like, you can see um, the core model definition, each workflow has a unique ID, can have a name, a version, description, and the core parts of the model definitions are function definitions. These are reusable as you can define them once. So we'll look at specific examples and then reference them throughout uh, your uh, workflow states or the building blocks to execute the control flow logic that can reference them and call different services. Um, workflows can both react to events, so it's be instantiated uh, by, by existence of events, and it can also produce events. So the second bucket of the model definitions are reusable event definitions. Uh, those conform, uh, we uh, conform to the cloud events specification. So all of our event types that the workflows can, can act upon uh, have to be in the cloud events uh, version 1.0 format. The third bucket is the workflow control flow logic or the building blocks, we call them states currently. And we will look at that. Those are really the building blocks to allow you to do, for example, uh, for example, gateways where you can split your workflow execution into different branches. You can do parallel execution uh, and things like that. And we will t take, take a look at that as well. So this is, for example, a definition of functions within serverless workflow specification. As you can see, this is very kind of uh, vendor neutral. We each function ha can have a name, a resource, and a type. So from the serverless workflow definition, you can really use a whole bunch of different ways of accessing and defining uh, services that should be invoked within uh, during the workflow execution. Now, of course, we know functions also for services need input parameters. And since uh, those are defined actually in the states that reference them. Um, because multiple states can, can execute different functions with different types of uh, parameter input. Um, events, uh, like we said, workflows can uh, react to events. Workflows can be instantiated given event times. Also workflows can produce certain types of events that then can be consumed by different services or even other workflows. Um, as, as we use this uh, cloud event specification 1.0 and events have a name, they have a type which has to match the cloud event uh, type parameter, uh, source, and we also use correlation because within workflow instantiation, a lot of times you have to correlate different events to the same workflow instance, for example, to resume uh, execution of, of, of a workflow instance or even start uh, a new uh, instance of a workflow. In this case, we use a correlation token. This is just within cloud event specification, uh, a parameter. In this case, we use an applicant ID because we want to correlate all the events, for example, in this case, applications submitted, SAT scores re re received and stuff like that uh, to the applicant, same applicant in this case, and in most likely the same workflow instance that handles uh, this application process that consumes these events. Now, the core building block or the building blocks that allow you to do all kinds of different things are states. State has a unique name, each state, and we have a whole bunch of different types, and each type represents a certain type of state that can perform a certain function. Um, each state um, of our serverless workflow can define the start of the workflow instance. So this is where the, the start parameter types comes in. We have different types um, of starts that we have currently defined they're expanding on. 
The default one just means the workflow instance is started, but there can also be, for example, one thing that we currently have is a scheduled workflow instance where you can say, I want to schedule um, the uh, execution of this workflow in this particular time frame. <clears throat> Next comes specific parameters for each state has different parameters depending on what it does. And also each state has an end definition. Again, this denotes that it is the end of the workflow execution. Uh, it can be different things. It can be either to terminate workflow execution, which means stop it, or in this case, in this example, it can be an end type of event where when the workflow instance is completed, we produce a cloud event, which then can be consumed by either services or other um, data indexing or, or whatever you want to do to say, hey, this workflow is completed, or it can trigger other workflow uh, instances as well. If it's not an end state, a workflow has to transition. So we have transitions from one state to the next. And this is denoted with the transition parameter, which we define the unique name of the state that we want to transition to. Um, state types, and I'm sorry if this is hard to read. We currently define nine types of states. Uh, we go from, of course, and, and we feel that these are kind of like the core states, especially for our version 0 0.1 that we have released. Uh, we're looking into adding more states and, and refining the ones that we currently have. But currently uh, we deal with events. We have the, co the core ones are, for example, the event state, which is a state that uh, is, uh, has ability to consume events. Um, the operation state is a state that allows us to do actions and actions can reference function executions. Switch state, so we have support for gateways, uh, which are database. So for example, given some information or data that is provided either with the starting of the workflow instance or the events that we are consumed, the event data can trigger different uh, actions or different paths throughout the workflow as, as it's being executed. Of course, parallel state allows parallel execution. Uh, and for example, the callback state, which is the newest one that we added, uh, this really allows us to do integration with different services and also user tasks. So you, being able to wait for for a user decision is, is very important sometimes during workflow execution when human um, decision making is important. So this is kind of like the core of the states that we have available in the, in the specification currently. Now, <laughs> as far as use cases goes, there's a bunch of use cases available and we do have in our GitHub uh, repo currently a use cases document that defines, I think, five or six different ones. I just wanted to show one. Here is an online vehicle auction, for example, where, yes? Okay. Any questions? Oh, okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, in this case, we, we have an online vehicle auction where users from different types of devices, mobile, web, you name it, can uh, bid on vehicles. And for example, in this case, a serverless workflow can be used very nicely to orchestrate different services. In this case, uh, authentication service, a bidding service, an in inventory service, um, at the same time, be able to store something in a, in, in, in a common data store. Um, so a workflow can do many different things. And this is kind of like one use case where, where, where it can be used. Now, as far as project information goes, uh, we are currently a subgroup of uh, the CNCF serverless working group. Um, as far as communication goes, we have monthly uh, Zoom calls, and which happen first Monday every, uh, every month. Um, this is the document where you can track our, our uh, meetings. We also meet uh, almost weekly on, on, on working on the specification primer document, which is still ongoing and, and should be done in the near future. As far as GitHub goes, we're currently under uh, the CNCF WG serverless uh, GitHub repository in the workflow directory. And here is uh, also a link for our 01 release uh, that happened about two weeks ago. Um, as far as governance goes, we're consensus and community driven. We're still a very small project as far as 
numbers goes, as far as community goes, but we're growing fairly fast. And we're hoping that within the inclusion and the, you know, into CNCF sandbox project, we can really grow this community. As far as owners goes, and I had, hate that word owners, currently the companies that have the decision-making power, uh, currently a Red Hat, Nokia, Camunda, and Huawei. Uh, and, and we're looking at expanding that as well. As far as license go, we're currently Apache v, uh, version 2.0. And I know Brandon Burns mentioned in the TOCPR that this might not be the perfect license for, for a specification. So we will hopefully work with him on and, and, and defining that in, in, in the near future to make sure it's the, it's the correct licensing. But either way, it should, it should be open source completely. As far as the community goes, we currently have a mailing list, which again is the uh, serverless working group mailing list. We have a Slack channel that we're using as far as um, communication um, or chat goes. And we also started uh, a blog with, where we are um, posting information and just community blogs about the specification itself. Um, as far as TOC sponsors, I know from the PR that we have created, uh, Brandon Burns and Liz Rice have raise their hand to, 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 to sponsor um, our, our, our project. And I don't know really, somebody can explain me the, the if we need three or how does that work? Uh, I don't know <laughs> very well how that goes. Um, all right, so do we have time still? Yeah, we do, right? So let's take a look at a quick demo actually that will speak uh, for that will show you guys. So, so what I've created is, is yes, we are doing a specification, but also at Red Hat, what we have done and, and, and will contribute back to, to CNCF is actually an API and also a runtime implementation, which of course is, is Red Hat specific in this case, but um, it's a first implementation of, of the serverless workload specification. It is not, Bounding bound to the, the entire specification version 0 0.1 yet, but we're kind of getting there. But for the sake of this example, I wanted to show you <coughs> this demo and I will go into presentation mode. What we're actually doing is we have this particular uh, serverless workflow, which is called JSON service call. Um, and what this will do is we want to start the workflow. We want to access an existing service. In this case is the REST service, which is freely available, restcountries.eu, and specifically the name endpoint, which we want to access via the workflow. So this is our service execution and get the list of, uh, get information about the country that, that our, uh, our input is for. At that point, let me go back to this. Uh, this simple work. So this is the operation state, uh, which actually calls, uh, has an action that gets the country information. All right. So we reference the country info function. The country info function then it will execute the, the particular call to the REST service that I just showed to get the country information. At that point, it's very simple. We have a switch state which you can look at it as a gateway and which has two choices or two paths from the gateway and it's based on the population. So if, for example, and this is just for the test, if the population size that we get back from the service that is, is less than 20 million, we say classify the population size of this country as small or medium. Or if it's greater, we want to classify this country uh, population size as large. And you can play with the numbers, it doesn't matter, it's just for the text. Uh, the classification actually, uh, again, calls two uh, functions or two services which store this information and they're defined up here as well. So basically it's a simple workflow. We just receive the country information and we classify it uh, and that's it. And we can run this locally. And I will show you guys that. Let 
I'm just, just going to skip the test to run faster. This is running on Quarkus locally. And what our implementation does, and this is something that we also want the specification to show, the workflows can be exposed in services as well. And what, the, what really happens is our workflow is going to be exposed as on a REST endpoint. So calling this REST endpoint and giving it some JSON data in this case is going to trigger the execution of the workflow. So if I go here and I go to localhost and we created a small little web page, it's just an HTML page, which calls the HTTP get for JSON service call. So this is also, if you see JSON service call is the ID of our workflow. So the ID of workflow, which is unique ID is actually going to be the same name as the rest endpoint that the workflow is exposed as. So yeah, if I may, can, go ahead. May I interrupt you here uh, on the demo or is, or is there more to show? Because there's a number of questions and we have a, a couple of other- Yeah, I'll just, I'll finish it in one around. minute. So basically this clicking on classify will trigger the workflow execution passing in the name of the country, Germany. You will get the information, classify the population size as large and display it. And we can do, for example, here in a small medium. And just to show you also, uh, just an example, one of the thing, things we have done to show that yes, you can deploy the workflows locally, but they're also deployable in this case in OpenShift. Uh, we have deployed this uh, application on OpenShift and you can easily see the same type of information. You can type in like Switzerland, for example, and classify there as well. Um, so that's it for the demo. And yes, of course, go ahead and, and, and any questions. Yeah, uh, I'll let uh, Harry then jump in, but I have a, a number of questions uh, noted down that, that I'd like to ask first. Uh, so the first one, you partially answered this one, but is there a, an open source reference implementation? Yes, everything that I've shown so far is open source. And the actual, there is two things that I've shown. One is the API, which is the actual ability to parse the JSON and the YAML from the workflow specification. Yes, that's, that is completely open source is Java. And that is something that uh, we will contribute back to the project once we have, uh, like I said, a proper GitHub structure in place. And we hope that the community then will pick that up and, and help us not only with that, but also be uh, contribute uh, the APIs in different languages as well. But the execution engine is not open source. So this is right. It is completely it. also open source. Yes. It is open source. I think. Yes. Everything that we do is open source at, 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 at Red Hat. Uh, but again, I'm not promoting their runtime implementation because it has nothing to do with the specification. It was just for the example to show you guys something running. And we also hope that more and more companies, if they get involved with the specification, will create open source runtimes for it as well. Did, did you talk already to other projects? There are a couple of workflow projects. You mentioned obviously Argo, but there would also be Brigade. As a CNCF project, are you already collaborating with um, these projects actively? Um, no, we we our collaboration is really mostly with with the serverless working group and and the guys from Cloud Events. That would be definitely something we would like to to have the help and the collaboration in the future. Uh, but no, so far we haven't had the chance to do that yet. Uh, so the, the reason why I'm asking is actually two things. Uh, obviously, whenever like specification projects are a bit different to to implementation uh, projects uh, in what well, that somebody needs to implement specification, obviously, which requires it to be handled a bit differently. And if, if the goal is interoperability, um, I think it's a good thing to do. But I would really have this almost as a prerequisite for your project that you actively engage with the Argo and brigade folks also for your own interest because otherwise you will build a specification and all the other projects in the CNCF are not not actively using it. So I think as a as a pointer talking to the Argo and Brigade folks and how you can more or less jointly work together would be a a great idea here. Yeah, I I completely agree. And I think this is where we kind of really try to get 
uh, our project, which is currently small into a, a CNCF sandbox project, is that will really give us exposure not only to the community, but also the other teams within CNCF. So yeah, the, the, the collaboration would be much easier for us in that case. I, I actually still propose to do it the other way around, honestly. I would really propose reaching out to these projects and engaging them early on. Mm -hmm. So obviously CNCF might help you, but you at a very early stage with the, the 0 dot one And I mean, I've done a lot of standardization work myself and I really recommend getting them on board and really agreeing on the common problem that you want to solve with the spec. Um, because just be in the CNCF won't resolve this issue for you. So if, if they're interested, if they see value in, in doing this, uh, they should see actually the value right away. So I know it's not required in the official sandbox um, CNCF documents, but I would really strongly encourage you to, to do this beforehand because like there is no silver bullet uh, just by being in the CNCF that suddenly people will magically show up um, and then contribute to a project. So that would be my proposal for you to, to actively reach out to them. Okay, that's a good idea. It's, I mean, you could accept, because one thing is a sandbox project for sure, they could just more or less die or, or if, if they not become active. That's why I would do it right in front. Definitely, yeah, yeah. But one thing is, yes, we're currently still small as far as community go, but we do have some a lot of big companies in place that have been around workflows and business automation for years. So that we have the advantage of that. Uh, so, but yes, definitely, as you said, we will engage and 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 try to see you know where that leads us. Definitely. The reference implementation we asked. I wonder what what are the <coughs> pieces that you have shown right now is uh, really specific to serverless because it feels like it's a like general purpose workflow definition language. Excuse me, I, I didn't understand the question. So, so I wonder what what's really so specific to serverless workflows here because basically it's a workflow definition language in JSON, as JSON and YAML as far as I. Um, as I understood, and I, I don't see this, the, the, the really serverless part in there. Oh yeah, that's a good question. Uh, for serverless is really kind of like a buzzword anyways. We describe serverless, we use the word serverless because we focus the niche of this specification is to orchestrate serverless functions. And uh, this is kind of like what we're, what the way serverless is used. Yes, there is some community, you know, there was some question in the past, maybe we can call it cloud workflow, or maybe we can change the name, but I feel that serverless fits this niche nicely because as long as the buzzword is used for uh, functions and microservices deployed in the cloud environments, I think we also need to stick with that word because we are not looking for a general or replacement of existing uh, gen general business automation or business process management workflows. Uh, we're looking for a very niche specific and, and, and do what we do best within orchestrating uh, microservices, which are loosely deployed on, on, on cloud providing envir provider environments. That's kind of like what we're looking at. So uh, my next question would, would be kind of like, Moving in here, is there also is part of the specification to define how I should write a service that works with that specification on an API level? How you should write what? I'm sorry. A, a service, uh, like if you look at Lambda, I know they have like, uh, just taking Lambda as an example here, obviously there's lots of other serverless implementations out there. Like what payloads I can expect if I'm like writing a service or a step in your in your workflow process are you planning to standardize on this as well like this is like the data structure that they get i mean cloud events define parts of it but they more or less define the wrapper but not the, the the actual payloads and you have some payload components in there so is it also plan i could define uh, this more in the protocol and, and payload level for the services that i want that i want to write using this language as well all right it's a good question i'll try to answer it um, uh, currently, the only there there are two kind of like restrictions of what the serverless workflow specification defines. The one, of course, as you mentioned, on the event side, is the format of cloud events. The cloud events payload is really can be is in its data parameter. It can be any JSON structure or XML structure. 
or even base 64 as they define it in their specification. Um, as, as, as I mentioned before, uh, workflows really want to offload your, or, uh, or the orchestration part. And part of that is not orchestrating events and services, but also the data management. For example, inputs to a particular call, as you mentioned, to a, a function, getting its results, and then passing that, for example, to the next function call. Uh, the restriction that we currently is the data structures within the, uh, the workflows is JSON-based. All right, so right now, as far as payload goes, in order for them to be merged within, for example, the workflow context or the state data context, they have to be in JSON format. That is currently our restriction. That doesn't mean the data within this JSON structure, which defines the data or the payloads cannot be anything base 64 encoded images, URLs, you name it, but the overall structure of the payload and the data has to be JSON format. Yeah, I just think it, from an interoperability perspective, and I know that the Tecton, and you might talk to the Tecton people as well, and I don't know that also they're part of CDF, but they're not taught exactly discussing these detail in the interoperability working group. Uh, they discuss exactly those details and how to name things and how to pass like parameter bags along. And there's also other work, for example, in a totally different field in the uh, open telemetry project, like instead of these these IDs, they have like a standardized cloud this we see trace IDs, they do some work on, on baggage transportation and these kind of things. So I, I, if we're really talking about a specification, I would uh, see these things fold into this one uh, as well, honestly. Okay. And, and that can help to introduce you to the right people if you, if, if you need any pointers there, so. Definitely, yeah. Uh, Harry, any questions from your side? Uh, no, I have no further questions. I think uh, your discussion is very meaningful because uh, if we are trying to talk about a specification and then we really need to care about that, what can it fit to different implementations instead of just a specification. I, I think the further discussion around this topic, uh, maybe with the right, right, right person. And also I think they need to involve the um, service working group uh, in the discussion uh, to see uh, their point of view. What, what, what do you specifically mean? We have been working very closely with the serverless working group. And I mean, folks from uh, service working group, uh, input from service working group community. I'm sorry, I don't really understand what that means. The users or implementations, uh, I, I, I assume there will be uh, users or implementations in current service working group, no? Or for workflow? Are they interested in, uh, in implementation. So I think they may have some valuable input as well regarding to the project itself, correct? Yeah, we have, we have, we give status updates on the, in the serverless working group meetings. Mm -hmm. And we have been working with, we're part of the group, so we have received some valuable information and, and so far they have been also helping us some with comments on, on, on the primer documentation that we're working on. So yeah, we're, we have been working closely with, with them for close to a year now. Um, they also helped us some with the correlation, uh, inform, you know, data from, from serverless or from cloud event specification. So yeah, we're, we're working close and we will continue working with them um, as far as being a subgroup under serverless working group currently. Yeah, so there is communication. We're definitely looking for more or, or more advice or whoever is interested into, into giving us. Okay, then I just would move on to some uh, other topics on the agenda. Next one is a quick one. Uh, for those of you who have been with us for a while, we have been working for a logo for the SIG app delivery working group. Uh, there is a second round. There's also an issue linked in the agenda. If you haven't shared your ideas where you want this to go and provide your input, please do so. Ideally, yeah. But by the end of the week, well, this is a short week already. So let's say by mid of next week, so Wednesday next week, please provide your input so we can then eventually move this forward here. 
thousand. I know that Diane really likes bees. Yes. Put your comments in the issue, and we'll uh, work on being able to wrap this up. Yeah, I'll I'll do that and get it in there. Thank you. Uh, I also wanted to provide some quick updates on project proposals. Um, Litmus already typed it in there, so you should be ready for your uh, review process. Yes, you actually are, and it's currently on us, the chairs, that we did not find the time yet. Document is fine. Expect really to hear from us uh, this week. I had it on my plan to have a look at the doc today, but uh, for some reason the day turned out to be a bit shorter than expected, but definitely expect something from us in the coming days. So we did not forget about you. Just be assured of this. Thank you. <laughs> Right. Um, the other one, I think the operator uh, framework and hub is still with the TUC. For Kudo, um, same story there. So we are still waiting for feedback from the TUC. As there were some questions from the TUC regarding uh, Kudo. Uh, so I in also, case you don't, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Lin. Okay, yeah, I also have an update on regarding to the build pack proposal, and I'm reading the uh, documentation for build, build pack maintainers, and uh, I will take the review this week. I, I can be the uh, contact person for build pack review process. Yeah, for, for Kudo and Operator Framework, I would ask you to ping maybe the TUC mailing list directly regarding your project updates. That might be the quickest one for you to get it. So for Kudo, we are still waiting for the final decision how to proceed and for Operator Framework and Hub, the review has been done by the working group and is now with TUC and the TUC has to decide on, on next steps. So yes, then Captain has done its review. Uh, this needs to be then forwarded to the TOC. And any other projects we forgot about? No, I think there are no others in review right now. Well, obviously we now just started with the, the serverless workflows. Then I want to take the last couple of minutes for the air gap working group to provide a quick update and also operator. Who wants to talk about the air gap? So we have nobody there, just give them a minute. In case you did not have a look, the AirGap Working Group, and I will post it in the agenda, started to work on a best practices document uh, on how to do AirGap deployments. And I think that right now they only, they have already one customer example in there. I think it's from, I think it's from Gray. From Gray, sorry. Um, in case you are running an air gap environment or are interested, you should have a look at it. They're also meeting on Friday for those of you who are interested and want to join. I'm just finding the document for you. Just give me a second. Oh, that's the, oh, that's weird. Uh, Amy, is it possible that we have the, the meeting notes? Sorry, that was my mistake. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out where, where the document is. I definitely read it and I'll probably find out with the team. But in case you're running AirGap environments, um, have a look at it and also try uh, to join the, the Friday meeting. On the operator side, we have Mark here, yes. Now yep. we can hear you. I, I am here. Um, yeah, we don't really have anything to, like we've we've had two um, kind of recent meetings from the air gap are uh, the uh, operator working group still kind of working through the definition of the operator. There's some interesting conversations that happen every couple of weeks. I like, encourage anybody who has an opinion about what defines an operator. Um, we're still at the phase right now of just trying to define what the operator is. Um, I believe we have our next uh, meeting next week on this. Um, encourage anybody to come and join and, and, and participate in it. Um, Nothing to report yet, but hopefully soon. Sorry, I just closed all of my notes here. Give me a second. 
I think that's pretty much it for the agenda today. And we are finishing on time today. I'm perfectly on time. Yeah, just uh, I'll, I'll post in the link to the, the work done by Airgap uh, in a couple of minutes here. And beyond that, I thank all of you. We will reach out to some of the projects um, offline within the next couple of days and then see each other again in two weeks from now. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.